Hello everybody and welcome to a very, very, very special episode of Rockin' Token Talkin' Solo Interviews with Kelly V. This is an old interview I got to do with the incredible Byron Straub. If you know me at all, you know that I'm a fan of Canadian and I'm also a fan of Strapping Young Lad. This is one of the best moments of my life. It happened quite a while ago now and, um, you know, I've been told all along that it was impossible. And right here, a combination of Byron Strap and Strapping Young Lad talking to me, and the incredible help of Lips, Steve Goodloud, of Amble, and all of my wonderful metal friends. I can't believe what I've achieved. This is a miracle, and I can't wait to share this interview with you. And all the way through, you'll see just how special it is for me. So thank you so very, very much for tuning in, supporting, and sharing, and just spread them around, my loves. Thanks so much, Kelly B. Um, today is a very special day. Every, every interview is special, I won't lie. Um, but it's not every day you get to talk to one of your absolute idols who's been with you almost half your, more than half your life. And, um, has pretty much been a part of shaping exactly who you were as a young person into your adulthood. So thank you so much for tuning in. I can't wait to tell you, and I'm going to do it right now. We're going to interview the incredible Byron Stroud. Um, just so many wonderful projects. Um, and if you're unfamiliar, I hope you familiarize yourself with them. If you're a metalhead and you don't know who Fear Factory is, or Zimmer's Hole, or Strapping Young Lad, shame, shame, shame. I hope you got your joints, I hope you got your dab rigs, whatever it is you use, your bongs, sit back, have a beer, have a coffee, just tune in and enjoy. Thanks so much everybody, Kelly V. What an incredible day to be alive, what an incredible, thank you so much everybody. We're going to jump right into the interview now, stay tuned. Hello. Hello. Wow, thank you so much for doing this. Um. How are you? I'm good, thanks, and you're totally welcome. Aww. My pleasure. So, uh, you're currently sitting right now in British Columbia. What's what's going on out there with everything? Is it completely closed down? Um, I mean, in parts of Vancouver, yes, and but where I live, I'm in the interior in the Okanagan now, so it's. Uh, you know, in, in the northern Okanagan where I live, it, there's oh. maybe been 28 cases of COVID oh, in total. Wow. So it's yeah, and it's really easy to like social distance where I'm at. You know, everybody's got <laughs> acreages and and whatnot, right? So it's it's pretty it's it's going pretty smooth actually. For those Americans that don't know, that's probably one of the most beautiful parts of our country, right? I would say so. Yeah, that's kind of why we moved up here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so was... Get away from people and have you know have a decent you know hot summers and not too cold the winters and oh. and uh, yeah and you can you know get property for fairly cheap these days. So it, it really interesting, interesting. Yeah. I mean that's that's not achievable anywhere in Ontario <laughs> at all. Cheap property. No, no, and it, I mean it is it is definitely changing every day up here, right? So it's. uh it's not what it was, you know, four years ago when we bought here, but it's, uh, it's definitely more achievable for somebody like ourselves. Wow. That's about as elite as you get in this industry. I love Strapping Young Lad. I love all its members. I love every side project that's ever come of it or through it or around it. Um, we're going to get right back to the interview right now with the incredible Byron Stroud. Thank you so much, everybody, for tuning in. I know you're going to enjoy this. Uh, so many cool things uh, revealed coming up. Thanks, everybody. Uh huh. And how do you find... Um in Vancouver, the the metal scene is it bigger than it is in Ontario? You say? Um, I mean, I'm kind of you know I'm not so in it at, right at this moment, but I, I definitely know like um, you know when I, when we were coming up with strapping and, and zimmers and all that stuff, it was it seemed to really thrive. You know, I think mean, uh -huh. Devin drove a lot of that, and uh, and you know, but you know, say that though, when we go to Ontario to play shows, they were always. You know, off the hook, right? They're always killers. So um, I'm not sure right at this moment, but you know, coming up, it felt like Vancouver was was the place to be at the time when we were doing our thing. Was it harder for you guys to break into the U.S.? Do you think just being Canadian and getting a kickstart? Um, not really. You know, like I, I 
I always thought that before I started strapping, I always thought with my other bands, I was like, oh man, how do we break in the stage? Is it because we're Canadian that we, you know, we don't not have an opportunity? But then I realized, you know, if you're good, you're good. We'll, yeah. We'll come to you, right? That's probably true, brother, for you. Um, I know it's a struggle for a lot of Canadian bands, but like I said, you are nothing but um, metal royalty, and I'm so very, very proud that you are Canadian, and um, so am I. So uh, I just want to say uh, thank you so much for uh, all your music and how it influenced us. So early on, when I first befriended Byron Stroud, um, I sent him a video that I had made to um, obsolete, and it took him a very, very long time to respond to it, and I thought maybe I had offended him, but uh, when he responded, he said he liked it, and it was so worth it, because that was, you know, a week of just pouring my little heart into making that, and um, repetitively listening to the song over and over again um, to my roommates at the time were... Um, got a little bit insane but uh i'm so proud and i am so honored to do this interview and it's uh was once in a lifetime day so thank you so much and i'm gonna get right back to it you've been listening to the pop pixie show at rockmetaltalk.com with your host kelly v and we're gonna jump right back so, uh, yeah. um you know we didn't work the states a lot in the early days because we just would go to europe and we were mm. like towards such media in the very early days and uh, <laughs> we basically didn't want to do anything they told us to do right so uh, <laughs> we would just do our own thing we ended up you know we'd go to places where they we felt they'd appreciate us more like Australia the UK other parts of Europe and um, Japan and stuff and then and then eventually we thought okay well you know let's try go down the stage do some shows and see what happens and yeah it was great you know the response was killer and we realized oh yeah we have a following down here as well so we, oh yeah and we started working it we, yeah we started working it a little more after that that's so funny to hear you say that you're just like going against your label because uh I just talked to so many bands it's so hard to get a good label to get good support you know to be toured or supported in that way and it does make sense because you guys are good enough to be able to be rebels within that I suppose oh that's right. awesome and, then, and in the early days for sure in the 90s it was you know with Central Media we, we, you know, we felt they weren't doing it you know the right things for the band but coming around 2000 Steve Joe came along as our A&R guy in the stage and he basically you know flew us down for like I think it was like a 10 year anniversary Central Media party and he just you know he talked to us and, hey man like I support you guys this is what we want to do and you know his hanging out with Steve made us realize that there was you know somebody at the label that actually cared about us and uh and that's what um you know kind of changed our perspective on touring well thank god for that we really appreciated having you come through or having you come through anywhere close to us as fans so thank you so much for uh that that experience for happening well that's so wonderful I'm so glad you did I mean that's that's big that's big I think um Heart, I just hear heartbreaking stories after heartbreaking stories about how the whole thing has changed now and what a label really does. But um, there are some really good ones out there still, I think. Um, I can, I, I know yeah, I, I think there is too. I mean, I don't, like I said, I haven't dealt with any labels in a, in a while other than just doing some licensing deals and stuff. But, um, you know, with the music of this whole record, I mean, we're going to look at it again. And uh, I think... Mm -hmm. You know, maybe the way to go for us is just uh, to license the records and not, you know, not have to rely on a label for financial backing because I just don't think the money's there in the, in the industry anymore for that. So if you could do it yourself, it seems to be the way to go. That seems to be what I'm hearing over and over again, and it seems to be what younger bands have to do to rise up. And it's so much pressure on somebody starting out to have to do everything yourself. And, you know... Yeah, I wouldn't want to have to do that again for sure. So, you know, like, thankfully, you know, we've all got a, a name in the business, and we can, yeah. you know, people people listen to us and then you know take our stuff seriously. But uh, yeah, starting out as a new band, I, I don't even know if I'd want to nowadays. It just doesn't. It just seems like you'd be banging <laughs> your head on the against the wall. But I mean, you know, but obviously do it for fun and and do it, you know, for the love of the music. But uh, mm -hmm. as far as trying to make a living at it nowadays, I don't know. That just seems like almost impossible. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's a real shame. I think that this is a really sad thing to say, but COVID has kind of turned the corner 
on the whole industry as to having to revamp itself and to, to come up with new directions to do online things to do things really differently and hopefully you know artists get back that support that was once there yeah I mean we'll, we will see you know like um, yeah who really knows <laughs> that does seem to be the common thought nobody really knows what's going to happen Wow, this truly is one of the very best days of my life. Thanks so much, everybody, for sharing it with me um, and supporting and uh, just listening to Rock Metal Talk and the Pop Fixie Show. We're going to get right back to the interview for you. Thanks so much, everybody. That was oh, cool. wow. Yeah. Oh, that yeah. would be. Yeah. Oh, wow. Um, I, I am probably the biggest Strapping Young Lad fan in, in the world truthfully um <laughs> literally you know my group of friends in college like I, did, I discovered it pretty young and uh it stayed with me for so long and i think the music is just so it's just perfect you know it's it really is there's um i i suffer from narcolepsy it's very very difficult for me to go to sleep and strapping young lad puts me to sleep <laughs> Like, that's a jet set too <laughs> but it's like there's yeah. this amongst all the intensity there's this beautiful sort of hum that's comfortable you know what I mean actually I, I do know I know I can relate to that for sure yeah yeah and that for whatever reason almost hypnotizes me puts me in a trance and I'm like <laughs> <laughs> which is almost the <laughs> highest compliment right um I also, it, it, you know, happiness brings on some weird episodes with narcolepsy, which which literally paralyzes parts of your body for a few minutes at a time. And right now, I can't move my arm or my legs because I'm so happy. So <laughs> hopefully, my face doesn't go, or I don't just smash into the keyboard. Out of but you know, that's like the ultimate compliment at a show. You know, oh, she's down. Oh yeah, I'm having so much fun. I can't move. Right. Um, <laughs> but it is a, it it has like been with me a very very long time and you said it was your favorite project is that oh yeah by far because you know it was something that you know I've known Devin since we were you know kids not you know like young adults or whatever and playing local bands around Vancouver and we were always tight always friends and same with Jet Jet was in, you know both Jet and Devin were in bands with me before strapping um, local bands and you know, we spent a lot of time with, with those guys, and then, uh, you know, so when I got, finally got a chance to be part of it, um, you know, it was, it was awesome. When I, I came in just, you know, during the recording of the City Record. It's my favorite, and I think. As well. Yeah. yeah, with Gene, right? Gene and I came into the band at the same time, and, uh, yeah, it was just so awesome to spend time with it. just felt like you could see the progress we were making, right? Like, which is mm -hmm. really cool. It's like, you know, every, every record, every tour, every show, the, just got bigger and bigger and bigger and you could just like kind of watch it grow and, and that was the amazing part of it and you with your friends so you know like you see you know they see the you all you see and they see the best and the worst of you and which really makes you know for lifelong friendships and mm -hmm. stuff like that so uh yeah it was it was definitely fun really fun and exciting to be a part of that and uh i'll always hold that close to my heart for sure just editing this is making me cry right now and um also bringing on those happy episodes um because as you as you said that and as i was listening to it back i realized you know it was just such a special time when i found strapping young lad in my life in um my musical growth and understanding and um, the human beings around me at the time and uh you know I've tried to explain to them, you know, that I'm doing this, and I hope that, uh, you know, they are proud of me right now. This is an achievement for all of us uh, in that time. Uh, it was a very, very special time in metal, too, as well, and I, I think you're a revolutionary in changing so much and um, influencing so many people. So thank you so much, Byron Stroud. Thank you so much, all of Strapping Young Lad. Thank you so much to all the members of all your bands for doing exactly what you do. I'm going to be a little bit cheeky here, and there's no disrespect meant to doing this. Um, and I'm going to play a little clip um, from another great Canadian moment, because I feel like um, I've gone into that mode. We're not 
worthy. We're not worthy. We're not worthy. We're stuck. We suck. <laughs> We're gonna get back to me making that ass of myself uh, with someone pretty awesome. Oh, they are the Poppy Show, RockPedalTalk.com. Thanks, everybody. Hey, sorry about that. <laughs> no, that's no problem. No problem. There's always stuff going on here on the farm, but yeah. So, anyways, um, yeah. So, anyways, all of a sudden we're like doing strapping and and fear factory, you know, and it was like a big juggling act for the next uh, few years. Wow. And, um, yeah, so, I mean, but it was like, and it was, uh, when I quit fear factory, it was more in the end, like when Dino came back to the band and Burton decided to keep me there still and we brought, brought in Gene, the mechanized record and all that stuff. It was just, it was just, I think Dino had, you know, he'd been kicked out of the band once before and now he's back and I think he just, you know, all the promises that were made to me by the other guys, who weren't there anymore any of the promises that Bert made to me which which uh you know which was which was you know solid solid things for the future for, the, for me it just never panned out you know and there was always an excuse after excuse of why it wasn't panning out and after a while I just thought oh, you know what man like I just gotta be happy and this the end of the you know that whole mechanized touring cycle even though it was an amazing we did some amazing shows got to tour with some amazing bands uh, I just uh I just wasn't having fun. And that's, I guess, you know, it, it would show in the music. It would show, you know, if you had to stick with it. You know, if you had no other option, like, like some people, you know, maybe get trapped because they're so famous they can't leave a band, maybe. But... Right. So glad that that wasn't the, yeah. that wasn't the case. Um, yeah, you start you start relying on the paycheck and whatnot, right? And then, mm -hmm. But when that paycheck starts to dwindle away as well, you're like, well, what the hell am I doing this for then? You know? <laughs> I mean, if I'm not happy, right? So. The three very loyal fans that will still come. You know what I mean? There's always going to be yeah. forever. You know, forever. No matter where you go, there's there's going to be people that absolutely love what you do, undoubtedly. Um, and that must feel really, really good. Like, if you were to say, hey, I'm going to do something new tomorrow, people would just, you know, be all over it. That, that's a good feeling. Yeah, yeah, I'm, 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 you know, and it's, it is definitely cool, but I want to make sure that people get, you know, what I enjoy too, right? You know, at this point in my life, it's like, i got to really enjoy it. And, and that leads me to the other band, um, the Mono, that I started mm -hmm. doing with Jed and and a couple guys from Devin's band, Ryan and Beef, and uh, John Howard from Threat Signal. But it was, um, it just didn't really, you know, I just, the further we got into it, I really started realizing that, you know, maybe they were just having me around because of my name, <laughs> stuff like that, right? And, and I wasn't really enjoying the music so much, so but I thought, oh, this is my chance to get back out there and tour and do some cool stuff, but then I just wasn't feeling the music. I just could not, like, Mm -hmm. Groove on it, you know. I wasn't something I was so proud of. I put my name on, so I had, mm -hmm. to, I had to step back from that. And it showed in my performance with those guys too. You know, in the right. studio and lot with the stuff I did do with them. I could just tell my heart wasn't in it, right? So um, mm -hmm. I thought it was best before the you know the, the fans start really getting into it. But you know, I stepped back, and so that's why I did that. You know, and, just, and I think Jed left for similar reasons. You know. Wow, that, that, you know, but if everybody feels it, like, was there hard feelings or upset feelings? Um, I, I, not really, I mean, everybody's pretty cool, I still talk to, to Beam a lot, him and I have been tight for many years, so it's, it's fine, That's but cool. I, I don't know, I just, I, you know, I kind of think that people do things for the wrong reasons, and I, and there's one guy in that band that I thought did things for the wrong reason, and, uh, you know, and I, a little bit of hard feelings, maybe with him, at the time. It is so incredible to get to hear these personal, you know, um, opinions later on and, and to get to hear the stories that shaped the music and uh, your career. What an incredible honor. I hope everybody out there is enjoying this interview as much as I did. Thank you so much, everybody, for um, tuning in and supporting everybody. Wow, wow. Has the current situation inspired any of that album? Um, oh, for sure. Like, 
you know, so when I, I spent some time with, with Bao the other day and uh, came up with some some lyrics and some concepts regarding it. Um, yeah, so yeah, for sure, it's definitely going to inspire how good not, right? So, mm-hmm. so, so that it'll be in there. Oh, I can't wait. I can't wait. So who does, like, everybody participates in the songwriting? It's not just one person? Well, I mean, depending on, depending on the parts. I mean, over the years, you know, Jed is the primary, you know, songwriter, right? He'll, he mm-hmm. writes, you know, 96% of the riffs. <laughs> you, <laughs> right? you know, on the earlier stuff, I wrote a lot more on the earlier stuff. But it's on the later shouting record that was all jazz you know and then we, we know of course you know we're free to do our thing all the top of whatever we concepts about the actual song that he comes up with and the lyrics I'd say lyrics and concepts with songs like um lyrically I think is is pretty much a group effort oh wow you know there's definitely we're, yeah which is which is cool and that's one cool thing about Zimmer's Hole is that you know we, we'll come up with a funny there's a funny story or a it funny is. concept that yeah. we're sitting around no matter how ridiculous it is we like turn it into an awesome song <laughs> you know yeah. and that's that's the, the one fun thing about Zimmer's Hole um, that uh it that is. we all love and I think that's why people get drawn towards that band as well mm-hmm. just cause it's you know we are just having fun but at the same time it's some of the most brutal metal music you'll, you'll yeah. hear it Exactly. That's what I was just gonna say. It's so silly. It's so fun, and yet it's got perfection. With the music is just it's awesome. It makes me chuckle. Uh, this is such a big honor. Thank you so much for tuning in and sharing it with me. Um, this has been truly one of the best days ever, and I never thought I would get here. I never thought I could do it, but I just kept trying, and I just wanna. Put that out there to everybody. Just believe in yourself and keep trying, and good things will happen. Good. I hope everybody agrees with our assessment on uh, Zimmer's whole, the fun and the um, perfection of it all. That was awesome. We're going to jump right back into the interview with uh, Byron and uh, hope you're all enjoying it as much as me. Thanks, everybody. It is awesome. Um, Do you think that, you know, strapping would ever come back together? Just had to ask for anything. Um, no, I mean, as much as I think most of us would want that to happen, I mean, I'd love for the chance to play with Devin again, and, and Gene and Jed and all of us be on stage or in a room, people are going to hear this stream, I just don't think it will happen. I mean, I think, um, oh. you know, it's funny because we went to NAMM last year uh-huh. and hung out with everybody, and, uh, you know, there's pictures taken of us all together, and it was when we started flying, and people asked, you know, asked us, what is it going to happen, what's going to happen, and, um, you know, and Gene had the best response. He's like, I would have to ask myself if this was if this happened. You know, what was wrong with Devin? Why would Devin want to do this to himself again? <laughs> you know, <laughs> exactly. And that's, and that's how we all feel. Oh. Right? It's like, oh. you know, it's like you, our, our our bro is like, you know, is he? Why is he going? Why does he want to do this again? No, you know what it does to him. Why would he want to do this to himself? Right. So. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's got to go to a certain place that the rest of us don't go to to be able to do that. Yeah. That music, right? Like, yeah. the rest of us, it comes pretty natural. But for Devin, it's, uh, it's a side of, of him that he, I don't think he, he doesn't want to be there, you know, and I totally get it. And then I see him doing strapping stuff, and I think, oh, it's, it's awesome that he can do that. But I think it would be a whole other thing if we were all together doing it. There would be a whole other energy there that I don't think he necessarily wants in his life anymore. So, which is totally fine by us, right? And um, yeah, yeah. I'm hoping that one day, like I've seen, I've seen Jed has had the opportunity to play songs with, with Devin over the years. And, um, you know, I think one day, hopefully, maybe I'll get a chance to do that too. That'll be good enough, you know? Yeah. yeah. Wow, just getting to learn some of this stuff is um, such an incredible experience. Um, I just had an episode of um, cataplexy, which is um, paralysis of part or all of your body um, with strong emotion. And um, just listening to this next song that I spoke about before, um, where Strapping Young Lads music has this intensity that just um, shakes through your whole system and yet um, this absurd calming 
sensation within the drone of it and it instantly puts me into this um, it's called the sleep attack um, or almost like a trance light state um, prior to one of those episodes and it just induces severe calm within the intensity it's quite a rush um, it's one of the few bands that actually achieves this um, weird narcoleptic sensation um, maybe because I just um, am such a huge fan as well I'm not sure um, but I think if you listen closely you'll understand exactly what I'm talking about in City is my favorite Strapping Young Lad album too Byron but uh, that song is especially dear to my heart I really really love it um, if you don't agree um, too bad because that is one of the best minds in the music industry and one of the best vocals with one of the best bands around it that was ever created. So we're going to jump right back into the rest of the interview. Thanks so much, everybody, for tuning in. Yeah, I do. And, you know, his what he deals with um, was an inspiration. And as somebody who battles um, disability and um, been shamed for it, um, what I'm doing now is the reason why you know to have you know to stand right. up and do something and the amount of musicians that have reached back has just been insane but since day one I think my first post if you scroll all the way back on my page is one day I'm going to meet Devin you know I'm persistent at what I <laughs> when I said a goal you know and I, I think I've posted it ten times it'd be like my make-a-wish mean if they did that stuff for adults but they don't I've looked into it, actually. <laughs> but, you know, I've been so blessed along the way. And, um, like I said, just meeting you and, and talking to Jed has been two of the highlights of my whole... Thank you so much. So you just witnessed me go totally full nerd alert. I hope you appreciated that um, as much as I did. So thank you so much. Uh very few people get a chance to tell the people that influence them so much in the world and that they have done so and it is always an honor i've always thought that strapping young lad is the perfect combination of just raw insanity and extreme perfection and um the tightness and their ability to play um live what they create in studio to a T is always impressed me um, and I will always love their technical ability that's just unfortunately one song you cannot scream along to <laughs> very easily um, this is one of the most impressive songs and one of my favorite songs by them we're gonna jump right back to the interview so you're a farmer now yeah for sure well we got we got a, we got a, a hobby farm really I mean it's uh, You know, a couple of horses, some pigs, and goats, and chickens, and farm some hay and stuff. So oh, wow. It's, uh, it's definitely been a, yeah, like a crash course of being a farmer, which is pretty, I mean, it's, it's I like it, man. It's, it, honestly, okay. it's like, you know, to be able to feed yourself and, and um, your family by, you know, your hard work on the farm is, is, is definitely full well, you know, satisfying, you know, and uh, oh. being, being in the mountains and, and uh, being away from the, the mass people in the cities. Is, is I take a break right there and we're going to play Strapping Young Live with Far Beyond Metal. Thank you so much, everybody, for tuning in and enjoying this and uh, sharing one of the best days ever. Most incredible Byron Stroud on rockmetaltalk.com. I'm from Toronto and I traveled the States for the last five years and, you know, was in Oklahoma for a while. I don't know if you've ever been through Arkansas or Oklahoma, and you just oh, yeah. realize oh, how up there. yeah empty it is, right? Like there's just nothing. Right? And I and I came oh, back yeah. to Toronto for a visit and literally felt like kissing concrete and just I don't feel almost comfortable without that amount of people and the craziness, you know. But it's weird. I I can appreciate it. But after a while, you're kind of like, oh, another tree. Hmm. I wish I was a coffee shop or an interesting person to talk to or somebody, you know what I mean? <laughs> right? <laughs> but, but. Oh, for sure, for sure. I mean, I'm, 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 I'm
I was like that for years too. I, I love the city. I lived in Vancouver, LA, you know, Melbourne, Australia. Like I spent a lot of time in all these places. And, uh, mm. Love it. You know, so I almost bought a house in California years ago. Like I've just, I've just always been all about it. But uh, but as I got older, man, I'm just like, yeah. ah, you know what? I kind of like this too. Now when I go to Vancouver, I had to go down there last week for some business. And I was, See? I was like, get me out of here. No. No disrespect, man, to the people of uh, Arkansas, Texas, or Oklahoma there for a minute. Um, I didn't mean that there were no interesting people. I've met some of the most wonderful and lovely um, people in the world in that spot. Um, I just meant that there's not enough of you, and you're very spread out. So, you know, it's a way to go visiting or just to go anywhere. Um, but it's the, uh, the lack of just, uh, you know, places and things and buildings and you know restaurants and food and culture that um, sometimes I really really missed that is only found in something like a big city so um, shout out and love to all the people in that area so take it not to heart I didn't mean it in any way I don't think um, there's few things in my life that compare to being a podcaster for Rock Metal Talk. So thank you so much, everybody. We're going to get right back to the interview. There's still a little bit more to go. Um, I hope you're enjoying it uh, as much as me, but probably not as much as me. Um, that's probably impossible, but I hope you're enjoying it nonetheless. Only on the Pop Pixie Show at rockmetaltalk.com. I oh. cannot be here anymore. <laughs> oh, well. um, Toronto's kind of getting like that just because it's it's just the pressure you know the, the competitiveness the because there's just not enough not enough jobs not enough housing not enough you know so right yeah yeah, yeah the, the endless yeah. stress of it but not necessarily the amount of people because when before COVID hit there's always a festival there's always a something going on you know what I mean you just leave your house and there's art and music everywhere right I really, really yeah. love that. You know, the street the street performers, the subway performers, you know. It was just alive. Um, it's suffering bad now, I think. The whole music industry is suffering bad. We're losing our big venues. You know, that's that's a real yeah. heartbreak of, of the bigger cities, right? As their as their hundred year leases run out or whatever and they realize, Oh shit, this property's worth way more than I can afford, right? And they Tear yeah. down, turn into condos. So that's happening all yeah. over Toronto, uh -huh. yeah. Um, the Elma Combo, which was a really big place, kind of, not. none of them are big. That's that's the other thing, you know what I mean? The, yeah, I know, I know. They're bigger bigger by name than they are by size, I guess. Probably. Yeah, yeah. And it's said, you know, sure. there was a lot, of, a lot of bands that actually didn't even make it in the U.S. or Europe before they played Toronto. So it, it's, it's got yeah. an iconic place. But I think that... Um, you know, Montreal and Vancouver definitely have have you know. If you're gonna go anywhere, you gotta go to those three places, right? I guess. Um, yeah, pretty much. Where was your uh, favorite yeah. place to play in the states? <laughs> well, <laughs> all the major markets were always good for us, especially with, like Fear Factory and stuff like that. Mm. It was like, mm. you know, um, you know, like you know, the New York, LA, Chicago shows were always good, but um, I just. I seem to enjoy everything. You know, we had some great shows in, in some of the smaller places. I mean, Texas is always good for food factory, strapping as well. Like, mm -hmm. I had I have some great memories of meeting people in Houston and, and Dallas and, and stuff like that. And uh, Texas yeah, is it, another it just, planet, though, isn't it? It's just it another is. planet. I love that about Texas. Like, <laughs> oh. I won't lie, brother. There's some honest to God truth in that. We got a little bit more interview for you and a couple more songs, so stay tuned. Um, thanks so much for um, listening all the way through to the end. Um, this has just been an incredible honor. Thank you so much for sharing it with me, everybody. So, um, don't be afraid to do it. Please do it. <laughs> Please come to Ontario too. Yeah, definitely. But um, I think. Uh, I'm good, brother. I, I, I honestly can't move uh, part of my face now, so... <laughs> oh, no, okay, well, I'll let you go and uh, recover from that. Thank you so much. 
Thank you so much. I honestly think it'll be quite a while before I truly recover from all the happy today. Okay, like literally, my face went totally paralyzed. My legs won't move. My left arm won't move. And I am so, so happy. Um, so that was uh, one of the most incredible things. I probably said lots of stupid things, and I'd probably want to redo it a million times. But thank you so much.